Hi guys, it's Kelly Ladable here and I am back with another video for W Plus 9. Um, so today we are tackling kind of a masculine birthday card and as well as showing the mirror stamping technique. So I'm using a lot of, lot of stamp sets here. Um, this is the Cookies and Cocoa, then the Whimsy Alpha, the Friends for All Seasons Fall, Unforgettable, and then this, um, I'm using the Big Top uh, background and basic labels. Those triangles you saw are actually, it's called Just Geometric Triangles and they don't, um, that one isn't available anymore. So I apologize for using it, but really you'll see as we go through this, it's really just about kind of using your smaller kind of stamps that you have. Um, so I'm stamping the mug and then here I have just a clear piece of acetate. I'm going to put that back in the same spot um, to stamp my mug and my Misty and I'm going to stamp it again on the acetate. Um, stamp conditioners are great for this because acetate is kind of slippery. I'm going to pick it up off the stamp that it's stuck to and then I'm going to press it directly down on the paper which is going to give me a mirror image. You want to make sure that you're holding it steady with one hand and pushing with the other because if you slip if the acetate slips, then it's going to smear onto your card. And then I'm just going to, I can just wipe that off with um, some alcohol and a baby wipe and it'll come right off the acetate. So here I'm stamping a mask. Mask is going to be a little different this time, a little bit different. Um, I'm actually going to take the outside of it is what I need. That's why my masking paper is so large. So I need this little section right here in between the mug handle and the mug. And then I need to cut out the entire mug while leaving the mask intact. So I put this down and of course it went down crooked. And then I have on dark nail polish. So I can't even just like scoop it up with my fingernail. I just use my scissors when that happens. Um, and then I'm going to finish cutting out the rest of it. Here's basically how this idea came into fruition. Um, so it was Eric's birthday and uh, I needed a card and now this is horrific and I can't even believe I'm going to admit this. Don't judge me. Um, I struggle to make cards for like people, like my immediate people in my life. It's not something that I usually do. The only exception to that is pretty much my mom. I usually make her birthday and mother's cards, um, but everybody else just kind of not really, <laughs> um, which is sad because like I do it as a hobby. Um, but anyway, so he had said to me his birthday uh was this past week and he had said to me you have never made me a card and I was like oh, challenge accepted fine you know why because masculine cards are hard because I love flowers and pretty things and pretty colors and sometimes masculine cards aren't all that um so I took it uh, I took the challenge on rise to the occasion and um so here I'm using the big top background and I am stamping in hayride the whole idea of this was pretty much, oh, and I realized I needed to stamp the or mask the handle uh, for this portion of it. Um, and then I got worried that my ink got dry. So I like just re-inked a little bit of that where it was going to be on the mug. And then I'm stamping that down. And so my concept was um, his and hers coffee mugs at, with his being like the birthday mug because coffee is like a thing for us. Um here are all the other inks I'm going to use from left, like the top left to the bottom right. It is Gala Red, Pumpkin Spice, Wild Mango, um, Last Leaf, Falling for Blue, and Bloomsbury. All these things will be linked, yo. Um, but so here, I pretty much just wanted him to have a party mug is what I wanted. Um, so I picked out these rainbow of colors so that I could still use colors that I thought were pretty. And... Um, I am stamping all of these different little teeny tiny stamps uh, to decorate it. So, so I used a couple of triangles. I used a couple of stars. I used some party hats. Um, here I realized I needed to mask off the top of it, which would be like the inside of the cup. Um, and then I think in the unforgettable set, there's like a little grouping of teeny tiny stars. Um, I also use those to just kind of fill in any areas. Um that I felt were a little bit too open. Um, and so just moving through basically the color palette and each um, each color has its own stamp. So there's like two different party hats, um, it's two different kinds of stars, two different kinds of triangles. You get the gist of it. I wanted to be a party mug. It looks like a party on a mug. Um, and here's those little teeny tiny stars I was telling you about. So I'm just like filling all of this stuff in and then um, that's why I needed the mask on the outside so that I wouldn't stamp any of those things outside of this. Another reason I needed the mask on the outside. So I'm using these Whimsy Alphas. 
and I want them to the mugs to say his and hers. And these are awesome. They were like perfect size to fit on the mug and still look realistic. Um, still look like they would kind of like wrap around the mug. Now his fit much better than hers. Obviously one less letter, but also skinnier letters. With hers, um, I've got the H and the E. The E is very wide. So anyway, here I accidentally moved because I'm so bad at putting my magnets down. Terrible at it. So I had uh, like moved the paper and now I needed to get it back into position so that his would be in the correct spot. My bad. I am stamping again in that uh, Gina K amalgam ink because I am going to be doing some Copic shading on top of this so it doesn't look completely flat. And I'm just going to stamp that down. Nice, big, bold letters. So even though there's a lot of party in the background, um, the, it's still very legible as to what the mug says. Also, me just saying party in the background totally made me think of that, like, joke people make about people who have mullets, like, business up front, party in the back. Anyway, um, I did not cut a second mask for my, the other mug um, because basically I'm lazy. And so I just flipped this one upside down. And yes, that means the sticky side is up. I put a little bit of Tombo Mona Multi-Glue on the back of the little teeny tiny piece and then let that dry because that glue is repositionable when it dries. And here I'm only stamping her because even the R is going to be cut off. But you'll see once we, <laughs> I forgot to pick up my H, um, once we remove the mask that it will look like it is rotating around the side of the bug. But enough of the letters are there for you to get the point of what it should be saying. So going to stamp that down. Um, I just, I, I masculine cards are, are just very difficult. I can't use all of the things that I would normally use. And I know that there's a lot of other people who struggle with them. And since coffee is kind of like a thing for us like it's something that we share a love of um pretty much because we both work ridiculous hours um I just thought that it would be very fitting for his birthday card so here I've taken the little happy birthday from the basic labels and I'm going to stamp that at an angle because I wanted it to look like you know how they give you those fun little like umbrellas um in your drink when you get like fun drinks. Um, so I wanted it to look like there was this little like happy birthday flag that was coming out of his coffee. Um, so for his birthday, this is um, this is what we're doing. And I think it's gonna be a really, really good time and I'm very excited about it. So I found a little um, like cute Victorian boutique hotel thing um, that's relatively close to us. And they do, uh, like culinary classes and he's been talking about for a really long time wanting to do um, a cooking class here I'm using just my two square ruler to finish off that little flag and then I'm going to use that same EK success um, writing pen uh, which are Copic safe to connect my balloons like tie them to the mug handle I'm also going to use the same pen to outline my mug so that it is the you know, the same bold. It looks like it's stamped. I will tell you when I do this, I usually outline them in a smaller uh, width first. So that way if there's any errors or anything, when I go over them um, the second time, I can use a wider nib and it will look much better onto the shading. Um, I'm using, I'm shading it with grays because if you watch my video, you know that you can shade anything with grays and um, this will work right over the colors. It won't be anything that's an issue. Um, just on the left and the right hand side, leaving a center highlight to give it a little bit more of a round appearance. I'm also adding a little bit of shading to the bottom. For his mug, since he's got a lot more going on, I'm adding a little bit more shading. Uh, I'll show you the white one as well because I still want the mug to appear to be white. Uh, the way the stamp is drawn, there's like a little bit of a lip at the top edge and so I am adding a little bit of shading underneath that and then as well as the inside handle of the coffee mug. Anywho, back to the, it's not even really a story, the, the part of my life segment. Um, so anyways, been talking about doing a cooking class for probably like six months and I had looked at ones around here. We had looked at trying to um, take peanut to one. Um, but the, the ones that they offer for like the kids is just a bad night for us. And um, so I was like, I'm doing this. This is what we're doing for his birthday. And so I found one. And um, so the class is um, making 
your own pasta. So we're making gnocchi, uh, which I think will be super fun because I've never actually made my own pasta before. And um, like fresh pasta is supposed to be super amazing. And I love Italian food and he is Italian. So that makes sense. Um, so the way that they split up the class is basically you like they teach you all the tips and tricks for all the things, but then you get split up into groups because it's like a four or a five course meal. So each group gets assigned a thing that they're making and then um, you make the thing. And then after that, like you actually go, quote unquote, go to dinner and like the whole, like the wait staff and stuff serves you this meal that you've made. So I think it'll be a really fun experience. I've never taken a cooking class. Um, so I filled in the little coffee mugs with coffee. I had to go a little bit lighter because we drink our coffee the same way. And you know me, it's, it's coffee flavored sugar water. Um, so it's typically pretty light. I got a lot of cream in there. I decided to go with blue, um, to kind of match that falling for blue, um, for the banner. And I'm also going to use this for one of the balloons. Speaking of the balloons, I colored them three different colors and I tried to keep them relatively, um, on the gender neutral or masculine side of the scale like I didn't go with pinks and purples um I'm also going to start filling in some of these shapes so I went with um the mid-tone green that I was using for my party hat shading balloons this is typically how I'm sorry this is not typically how I do it because I filled in the entire thing but uh no big I can fix it with a white gel pen if I needed to um so I like to leave a little bit of a highlight on the left hand side and then I like to leave a white area on the right usually because my light source is typically in my top right hand corner and this is how I'm going to color the blue one. The blue one, I will leave the white. The green one just has the lighter green as the highlight. Again, if you choose to do that, like where you wanted to leave the white and maybe you didn't get to, um, you can just fix it with a gel pen. Ain't no big deal. So um, yeah, I've never taken a cooking class and I am very excited to try that to, to make my own pasta. So I will keep you guys in the loop to let you know how that goes. Um, I just think it'll be fun. I think before, um, I'm not going to show you the yellow one. I'm just going to show you the color combination because it's exactly the same thing. I am going to show you each individual marker that I use to color in the shapes in case you're like, oh my God, I love that color. What color was it that she used? Don't worry. I'm going to show you. I'm going I'm to keep you abreast of the situation, people. Um, so I just, yeah. So like when I was um, married, like I made dinner every night and I love trying different recipes. Um where like that's I guess different than the way I grew up typically I think most people cook the way that their families did but my mom and my sister um, both are I don't want to say picky because that sounds very judgy but they're very particular about the things that they will eat there's a lot of things that they don't like and while my mother was amazing and more than willing to make anything um, even if she ate it or not uh, my dad is a little bit limited too because even to this day like if you don't make it the way my mom makes it he don't want to eat it um so yeah so I just I like to try recipes and different things and so I am excited to see if this is something that maybe I can do at home um like for special occasions and and things like that plus I just I don't know I think it'll be cool to see like what their like the experts what their expert like way of doing things are instead of just my haphazard way of doing them in my own kitchen right so here I'm using the Colorless Blender because it is a very clean and simple card. Lots of white space. I wanted to just make sure everything was really just cleaned up and there weren't any marks outside. Here is where I'm going to go back over that. <laughs> um, I know you probably think I'm a crazy person. I'm totally okay with it. Um, I'm going to go back over all of it. I'm going to outline all of it because I just love the me, that bold black outline. I just do. And then I don't usually show this part because... Um, I, my videos are so long, but this one isn't as long. So I am going to show you how I do the inside of the card. Um, I scored it, folded it over with my Teflon bold and folder, bone folder, not bowling folder. It's not bowling. Um, what? Anyway. Um, so, and then I, before I adhere my card front to my card base, I always stamp the inside first in case I have any sort of errors. So I have this in my full size Misty laid open and I am stamping the um, sentiment from the Unforgettable set, which says like, you're kind of sort of really amazing or something like something to that effect because he is, and I'm very, very blessed to have him in my life. Um, but so now that that is done and I let the ink dry, <laughs> let the ink dry before you close the card because I made that mistake before. I'm just going to use some Tombow on a multi-glue to put that down. 
for the masculine cards, I typically tend to stick to using glossy accents as my way to add um, a little bit of shine, especially on the balloons. Like that just makes sense that they would be shiny and kind of fun. So I like to outline the whole thing and then fill in the center. And then because it is a card made by me, he is going to get a little bit of glitter on his happy birthday banner, whether he wants it or not. So that's it. That is the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.